I'm at the Hornsdale Wind Farm today, where Tesla has built the world's largest lithium-ion battery. It's a whopping 60% bigger than anything else of its kind in the world. AEMO's role is to manage the national electricity market, and we play a critical role in the integration of new technology like this into the grid. With me today is AEMO senior engineer Trevor Lim, who's played a key role in integrating this battery into the grid, and Adam Dodds, who's a project manager for NEON. So Trevor, what can you tell me about this project and why is it so exciting for Australia? Yeah, it's definitely an exciting project. It's an innovative project. It, there's definitely a sense that new ground is being broken. Uh, large scale storage has been talked about for a long time and this is f the first uh, implementation of that. Uh, so this particular project has uh, an energy storage capacity of 129 megawatt hours and it can discharge at 100 megawatts. So that capability will help at times of peak demand and there's some also some other benefits that we'll talk about a bit later. How is it different to the types of batteries that we're seeing installed in people's homes now? Well, the first thing is the obvious thing is, is the size of it. Uh, the second thing, as you can see, is, is probably the location. It's located adjacent to the three stages of the Hornstyle wind farm. What does this battery add to the national electricity market? Well, it really demonstrates that new technology can play an important role in markets that were previously dominated by conventional generation. So this is the first entrant of its type into the frequency control ancillary services market, which AMO runs. There are eight markets for frequency control and it's been registered for all of those eight markets. Historically, South Australia, uh, when needing to locally source frequency control, um, that supply has been quite scarce. Is it a game changer for the market? <laughs> Uh, well, while it can't solve every problem and do everything, it is a big step forward. Uh, it's obviously participating in those frequency control markets, which is really important. Uh, but in addition to that, its fast speed of response is being utilised to reduce the risk of South Australia separating from the rest of the NEM or the rest of Australia in the event of a, a major storm or multiple generation failures. Thanks for your time, Trevor. Thanks, David. So Adam, can you tell us a bit about the journey that you've been on to get this battery up and running? Yeah, sure. So this is a landmark project for NEON. It involved close collaboration with uh, South Australian government, Tesla, uh, AMO and Electronet, as well as a range of other stakeholders. Uh, the detailed design and construction took around four months, which is really quite remarkable for a project of this, uh, this magnitude. And I'm happy to say that the, uh, the battery is hooked into the national grid at the moment, charging and discharging just in time for the South Australian summer. Do you see yourselves building other similar battery installations across Australia? Certainly. Uh, previously this year we've uh, announced the Bulgana Green Power Hub, which is a project we have in conjunction with the Victorian Government and Nectar Farms. So that's a large scale battery and wind uh, installation in Victoria. Uh, there's also a range of uh, other projects, wind and solar, in our development pipeline where we're planning to incorporate batteries. And my final question, I, I have to ask this one, right? So uh, Elon Musk famously tweeted, 100 days or it's free. Was it a challenging project? It was an outstanding coordination between all the stakeholders, uh, NEON, Tesla, South Australian Government, AEMO, Electronet, and it's really quite impressive to see it get over the line. Thank you Adam and Trevor for your comments on this amazing project here in South Australia. I'm David Jones for AEMO.